Hello, and welcome to the Civil Air Patrol. My name is Master Sergeant Will Holloway. I work for the Public Affairs in Texas Wing, and uh, yeah, we all got together and we realized that sometimes it can be difficult to get started in the Civil Air Patrol cadet program. Uh, one of the major things we noticed is just how much things have changed from us old people to the way you younger, newer generation have to do things. Uh, I'm not going to tell you how old I was, but some of these trainings that were required online, well, the internet didn't really exist at that point in time, and they were all just paper, sign, you read, move on. So, uh, yeah, since things have gotten much more complicated, we're going to put together a little training session and a little training series to kind of walk you through your curry. Um, and, you know, this might just be considered a virtual curry academy. It's not going to replace the meetings or the mentorship at your local squadron. It's just going to help you get through some of the technology. So, step one, let's start with... Oh, wow. Now my... So, one of the things I learned making this video is that my webcam, if it's not turned on, does not make a voice recording. So this is actually a voiceover in post-production. That being said, this is your welcome to Civil Air Patrol email. And the first line on it is very important. It has your CAP ID. This is a number that you should memorize because you're going to be using it to get into all the services and accounts you've got. So make sure you, you write that down, uh, memorize it, and it'll be coming on your Civil Air Patrol member card here in the next two weeks or so. Um, also, and card should arrive here in about three to four weeks, along with a wonderful box full of goodies. Now, we'll get through those box of goodies here in a future episode. Right now, I just want to walk you through some initial training and get you going. So, Step one, if you read on this email, is to establish your e-services account. This is a members-only account that provides you access to all kinds of cool stuff online. So we're going to click this link, take us here. And you may be tempted to just throw your CAP ID in there. I've seen lots of frustrated cadets trying to just log in. What I need you to do is focus over here, first-time users, and we're going to click here to register. Now. This information is very super simple. You're just going to enter the information that was used to sign in. And then click register. The red is not bad. I don't know how many times cadets have told me, it just doesn't do anything. What well, the red's not bad. And see, down there, I got an email. Okay, so you have successfully completed the registration process. Your CAP ID username and a link to update your password is emailed to the email address specified above. Thank you and enjoy using Civil Air Patrol e-services. I'm going to pause this, get into my email, open that email. That way you guys don't have to read all of the other emails. And to be completely honest, I don't know what emails would pop up. So, yeah. Anyway, congratulations. This is our email. So we have officially registered for e-services. So we're going to click the link, and it'll pop up to create reset password. Now, our passwords have a lot of requirements. And you'll see down here they are there. They must be a minimum of eight characters in length, contain at least one character from each of the three here, and a new password, uh, new passwords must match. I'm going to take a little journey to this side of the screen because I want you to see what happens with these check marks, right? So I'm going to start to type in a password. Notice how those check marks are going off as I do what I'm supposed to do. Boom. Now my passwords must match. my passwords match. I need a security password, so I'm going to type this. And once again, oh wait, haha, -ha. I am now going to cover up my answer. Boom. 
and we will see that my password has successfully been updated and that my webcam image is now back in its original position. So we now have a new password. So I can click OK and we can go back to eServices. Oh look, notification. My password is reset. Oh, my internet is going so slow today. Okay, let's try it this way. There we go. Okay, so now I'm going to utilize my cap ID and my new password. I'm not a robot and sign in. And again, my internet is moving at light speed. If any of you are curious, I live way out in West Texas. And so we have rural internet access, which means even our really, really good internet can have issues from time to time. All right, so OPSEC message. OPSEC is operational security, and we have to agree to a non-disclosure agreement, an NDA, to access a number of systems. Um, we are the Air Force Auxiliary, so there's the potential that we could see stuff on in addition there is missions we do that we kind of just have to protect that information um, in disaster relief and the more you move through this program you'll understand why and it's more about just protecting the people that we work with and we work for um, because we don't always see people on their best day and we kind of just want to make sure that we don't hurt any of them in any of those manners. So what we're going to do is click here to go to the access training and we're going to take the training. Um, terms and conditions, we must agree to this. This is the information overall for how to utilize access, right? You have a tutorial here that will walk you through the menu system, enrolling, our transcripts, different badges you can earn, the main page, enrolling. Oh, wait, it's just repeating. Yep, okay. Don't worry about all of that because in a future video, I'll walk you through it. So we're going to click Agree and Continue. And now we are logged into our access, our learning system. And we have one class right here, Operational and Cybersecurity Level 1. So I will click Start. <laughs> Introduction. As a Civil Air Patrol member, you will occasionally handle information that is sensitive to some degree. Perhaps it's personal records. Maybe it's a list of our radio frequencies. Could be information about one of our search and rescue missions. Whatever it is, it needs to be protected. So this module is going to walk you through all of it. And it takes about 20 minutes for you to do that. All you got to do is run through these right here. Okay, so OPSEC and Cybersecurity Lesson Content. Click start, and now we're going to walk through each one of these. So OPSEC basics, you're going to scroll down and read all of the information here, and then you'll see lesson two pops up. And our missions, partnering agencies, members, I'm not going to bore you because we or you need to go through and uh, read this information for yourself okay and yes believe it or not there are a lot of people that want our information And just so you're aware, I'm going through the majority of this just because I want the old guys to be able to see what's actually on it. Okay, so we have completed the slideshow, right? And we can see everything. What The main takeaway of all of this, though, is OPSEC is everybody's responsibility. Always err on the side of cons, caution. 
If you don't know with an absolute doubt that you can give out information, don't. Go to your public information officer, go to your public affairs officer, go to your incident commander or your squadron commander. Those are the people that will be able to tell you what information you can give out or not give out to any public. And then vigilance. It's a standard password security, right? You want to make sure that you protect information. Don't just leave it out there. Don't leave passwords written on post-it notes inside laptops or stuff like that. All right. And anytime there's an accident, make sure you tell somebody. I will say it over and over for the rest of my life. If you give me a small problem, we can fix it. If you try to hide that problem and somebody else gives me your problem, it's far too big at that point in time. So little thing about access I want you to know. Anytime there's a close, use the close. This red X up here will close it and not give you credit. So don't use that red X until you see credit awarded. So close, complete. See, see, don't use that. Use this. Close this window. And now we've moved up in progress. So now we have a quiz we need to take. Start. So True or false? Steps to OPSEC are similar to risk management. I'm not giving you the answers. I'll be back with you momentarily. All right, so we are back at it. Uh, hopefully you have a congratulations you passed. If you did not pass, go back, review the course again, take the test. You have to pass this test to get into e-services. So we've done it, right? And then we're going to click our home, go back into the continue, and look, our progress bar is now updated to 67%. We want to complete the survey, and this will be, of course, your own answers. Uh, OPSEC and Cypher search. Uh, the module was consistent. I can agree with that. The amount of material was... I can agree with that. Yep. Uh-huh. And I do know a lot about operational security. And then we click Submit. Now, remember what I told you. Got to use the Close button down here. Red X will totally mess up everything for you. So Close, we have now completed this item. Close again. 100% life is good. And now we can go back to all of our courses and we have finished for today because operational security is done. Next episode, we're gonna talk about the tests and the interactive modules and what you need to get the rest of your curry done as well as the uh, cadet kit. So see you in a little bit.